Hey guys, Nerion here. Seems like Gamergate 2, as they call it, is in full swing. Sweet Baby Inc. and journalists are targeting the gaming community and even popular streamers and try to get everyone that dares to criticize them for their anti-consumer and anti-gamer practices cancelled. Everyone that dares to stand up in defense of video games is now being attacked by those hateful people and those corporations. First we'll cover how Kotaku is now publicly initiating a new huge cancel attempt against multiple popular influencers like Asmongold and Melanie Mac simply because they dare to oppose and call out Sweet Baby Inc's negative influence on games. Asmongold seems to be in a full on war with them now, since he's one of the biggest streamers out there, has a huge reach and thus represents a huge threat to their agenda. We're gonna take a look at what they're doing and how Asmongold is now publicly at war against them. And then we'll take a look at BBC joining the war and publicly calling for the censorship and banning of toxic gamers, with which they mean basically everyone who disagrees with them. But first, the Kotaku story and how their war against Asmongold is reaching new levels of dishonor honesty and desperation. Alyssa Mercanti, former cam girl and prostitute who's now working at Kotaku, is writing a new article against Asmongold and is now publicly asking people if they have any dirt that she could use to smear Asmon with. Trying to paint him as an alt-right bigot just because he criticized Sweet Baby Incorporated and their awful business practices and political agenda that's actively ruining games. Asmon already reacted to their newest cancel attempt, so let's first take a look at what he had to say. So Kotaku is uh, that, that one lady uh, is trying to uh, so there's been a narrative that's been being pushed recently that I have made a shift to being alt-right the reason why is because I disagreed with banning the sweet baby Inc steam creator group if Alyssa wants to find out what I think my DMs are open does she have a bot I, I think she does have a bot and this is some weird thing how she said that she got a tattoo that says all men are enemies I'll tell you something nobody with a sound mind gets a tattoo that says all men are enemies you know another another cancel attempt <laughs> Like, we meme it all the time with, like, titles. Asmongold is cancelled. My response to getting cancelled. I want to make one thing very clear. If these people could push a button and delete my life, they would do it. If they could cancel me, they would. I like how Alyssa Mercanti sucks at her job of reporting so much that she has to beg people on Twitter to come and tell her what she needs to put in her story because she doesn't know any of the information herself. She has truly reached a new level of desperation if she honestly asks people online to collect dirt on Asmongold, just so she can release the most hateful article ever that will depict him as the most awful human being. She's collecting ammunition to take down Asmongold with her article. They will most likely try their hardest to push this article as much as possible to make it go viral and then let the woke cancel mob online do the rest. Alyssa is openly sexist against men, but to go as far as to destroy a man's entire career and basically his livelihood just because he disagreed with her on a video game topic is extremely unhinged and hateful. Meanwhile she has all manner enemies permanently tattooed on her body and yet has the audacity to call someone else misogynistic. So it's rules for thee but not for me. And the fact that she's employed at such a high rank at Kotaku is baffling and should tell you quite a lot about what kind of company that is. Keep in mind though, I agree with him, but at the same time, these are the same Kotaku people that were trying to find the real names of the guys that were in the Sweet Baby Discord. They would very quickly get you fired from your job without a second thought and pat themselves on the back whenever they find out that it worked. Yeah, they literally tried to cancel you. Yeah, they tried to shut me down. They tried to get my sponsorship with Capcom pulled because I had the audacity to think that Sweet Baby Inc. might not necessarily make every video game better. And I even had the audacity to say that other other people had the right to have that opinion. Seeing a Kotaku senior writer liking and retweeting lies like these is actually beyond disgusting. I literally had to do more work scrolling through the infinite amount of likes she churns out every day than she ever did infiltrating the public Sweet Baby Inc. Discord server. And Alyssa Mercanti quote unquote infiltrating the anti Sweet Baby Inc. Discord server as she described the action in her article will go down as an all time classic. In her Kotaku article where she defended Sweet Baby Inc. by lying and misrepresenting the events, she stated that she infiltrated the anti Sweet Baby Inc. Discord server to get her information. Yet she infiltrated this secret Discord server by simply joining it. Cause it wasn't secret at all, it was public, so everyone could simply join. And yet she was even stupid enough to join with her real name and profile picture, so everyone immediately knew who she was. 
Alyssa Mercanti is proving over and over again how qualified she is for this job as a Kotaku journalist. Those are the kind of people that are writing articles about how sexist gamers are. And yet even though Kotaku is now officially crumbling and management is restructuring the company to focus less on articles and more on game guides, Alyssa Mercanti refuses to report on games and instead continues her political reporting and her attacks on gamers and influencers. Now that you'd finally hope for these writers to start working on game guides, they are back with another whopper. Kotaku editor Alyssa Marante has a weird grudge against Melanie Mack and wants to fight her. Now she has convinced Kotaku to let her write a hit piece on Melanie, calling out to anyone with rumours for ammo. Alyssa has convinced Go Media to let her continue to write news, while Kotaku pivots to gaming guides. She cites how her prior hit piece on Cabrutus was the second highest traffic article on Kotaku. She likely leveraged this to get Go Media to agree. Judging by another tweet she made, and her disgusting retweets and likes. Alyssa is most likely now also trying to construct a hit piece on yours truly baldies too. The fact of the matter is that whether you like it or not, the videos that were made generated web traffic for Kotaku and are the one reason why Alyssa can continue to spread bullshit instead of playing a singular game for the first time in her life. So my advice is to avoid Kotaku's site like the plague and just check out the videos or tweets that people make about it. You can check Kotaku popularity over time, checking Google Trends. Yeah, let's just look at Google Trends and then past 2004 to present. I can see why. I can see why. I, I, guys, guys, I think I see the problem. I, guys, I, I, I figured it out. Kotaku is on its way out. They have completely destroyed their reputation to the point where no one takes them serious anymore. I guess Geo Media is letting Kotaku milk this for all it's worth because it's probably the last time Kotaku is ever gonna make money. Presumably, once the traffic to the site begins to drop further, Geo Media will shut them down like they did with Deadspin. The saying, go woke, go broke, rings true once again. Who would have thought that reporting on social politics instead of gaming news and opposing and attacking your audience at every step of the way would lead to them losing their audience. How surprising, who could have possibly expected that? Definitely not Kotaku, since they clearly have their heads way too deep up their asses to think straight. They hire people like Alyssa Mercanti who has no qualifications for the job. She's not a gamer, she's a political activist. She clearly has no love for video games, and I doubt that she ever even played one without being forced to do it. When the Sweet Baby Inc. Steam Curator was created to list all the different games that Sweet Baby was secretly associated with so the public could see what games they had influence on and notice the similarities, a Sweet Baby Inc. employee called Chris Kindred tried to start the harassment and cancel campaign against the creator of the list. This went viral and that's how the Sweet Baby Inc. drama began. And yet Kotaku, as a gaming journalist, instead of positioning themselves on the side of the gaming community, they turned against gamers and backed up Sweet Baby Inc. on this. Sweet Baby Inc. doesn't do what some gamers think it does. No, one company isn't forcing diversity into all your favorite video games. Alyssa Mercanti published this article where she blatantly lied and misrepresented the whole situation. She stated that toxic gamers started the controversy when they attacked Sweet Baby employee Chris Kindred for virtually no reason, yet didn't mention once how that guy tried to initiate a harassment campaign against Cabrutus, the guy who created the Steam list, and even pressured Steam to take the list down and delete Cabrutus' account, including all of his purchases. Even though the list wasn't illegal and simply pointed out what game Sweet Baby Baby was associated with, with proof of their association. Yet Chris Kindred tried to get it shut down, because Sweet Baby wants to keep their involvement in games as secret as possible, cause they know should people realize that their association with games made the game significantly more political, woke and worse in quality, then people would turn against them. So gamers have every right to be opposed to them. Yet instead of backing up gamers on this, Alyssa McCandy simply labeled them as toxic and defended Sweet Baby with a bunch of lies. Like claiming that the idea that SBI is forcing diversity into games is completely unfounded, basically portraying gamers as dumb and even labeling them as conspiracy theorists multiple times throughout the article. And this despite their games clearly pushing the same politics and all suffering from the same issues. And the founder of Sweet Baby Inc, Kim Belair, literally admitting in various videos that they are extremely focused on diversity and explained her method to force games
game studio bosses to censor, alter and diversify game projects she feels are problematic, which is by terrifying them, aka threatening them with the anger of the cancel culture mob. Yet Alyssa Mercanti didn't mention any of this or any of Kim Balea's or Sweet Baby employees racist statements. She portrayed them like the poor victims of a hate mob of toxic gamers. And now her next move is to get the popular influencers that are exposing her, Kotaku and Sweet Baby cancelled, so that they would be free to do whatever they please and could turn and twist the narrative however they wanted it to. This means getting Asmongold and others that disagree with them cancelled, and that's what she's currently initiating. The best thing to do in my opinion is to either ignore them or to find other ways to look at her dump ass articles. Cause when people click on them, Kotaku will see it as a win and as if people want more of them. At this point, Kotaku isn't even funny bad anymore. Those cancel campaigns of them are just sad and pointless. Especially with someone like Asmongold who hasn't done anything wrong and is just too big and popular to be cancelled, no matter what story she will come up with. Yet they keep trying to infiltrate and take over our hobbies and when we speak up they try to get us cancelled and thrown out of the hobbies even though we were here long before them. And this brings us to the next story which just further proves how unhinged they're getting now. This is just insane. BBC Gaming presenter Jules Hardy calls for current Sweet Baby Inc. discourse to end with a final purge of ideological opponents from the medium. So she posted this unhinged tweet. Can we all agree that for round 2 of this it can be the final purge of these kinds of gamers? It's 2024 and I've been arguing about this for decades. Can we have a last full detox of these dudes so we can get back to the positive gaming community we have been creating? Ah yes, get back to the positive gaming community you have been creating by getting rid of every gamer that disagrees with you. Get back to positivity by initiating a purge of all the people you disagree with. This is insane. And remember, members of the media had labeled people as extremists and fascists for simply joining the Sweet Baby Inc. detected Steam group. And now they even feel comfortable enough to say things like this, calling for the purge of people who do not share their ideological views, purging people out of hobbies that they were members of long before those journalists joined them, during times where gamers were still looked down upon, before it became acceptable and even cool to play certain video games. As comments have been pointing out, like this one said, when nerd hobbies stop being trendy, you will be the first to leave. To which she replied with, I've been here longer than you. Of course you've been longer here. Who's supposed to believe that? A female LGBT media personality wants us to believe that she's been a gamer longer than all of us and thus that makes it okay to now purge anyone she doesn't like. If she actually would have been a gamer for such a long time, then she would be standing on the side of the people now that are trying to gatekeep games. On the side of the people that are fighting back against woke activists changing and ruining games because of aspects they deem problematic. Yet she's not. Melanie Mack also joined the conversation with a comment writing, aka you want to purge real gamers in favor of activists who can't hang in a multiplayer lobby without having a meltdown, or who can't navigate a single player game without yellow paint, shiny ledges and the character telling them what to do. Something to which Jules replied to, nah, I want to purge the hate and vitriol from gamers who refuse to allow gaming to evolve and adapt as we humans are doing. I have no problem with opposing viewpoints, but hate, violence and aggressive behavior isn't okay in any realm you live within. Yeah, because calling for the eradication of a demographic is very inclusive. Of course when you classify hate, violence, aggression and things like that, when it comes from journalists like Jules, what they mean is basically anyone fairly criticizing them. Meanwhile also claiming that legitimate harassment campaigns like that one led by a Sweet Baby Inc. employee doesn't fall under these categories. Also, just to point out, her comment had 44 likes and over 1.3 thousand replies on an account with nearly 50 thousand followers. And as you can see, she's a presenter slash host at BBC. Those are the people that cry fascism, yet they themselves act like fascists. Her call sounds exactly like the same sort of mantra of some guys wearing snazzy black uniforms in the 30s and 40s. Final Purge sounds awfully similar to Final Solution to me, but yet it's gamers who are fascist and hateful. These people infiltrate our hobbies that they used to make fun of and then change it to their liking, kick us out, the hobby's popularity collapses and they start looking for the next thing rising in popularity and the story begins from the start. It's the circle of wokeness. They demand to be included in your space to make it more diverse and inclusive. They demand you change the space to their liking and ban stuff that offends them. They demand you be kicked out of the space they quote unquote created since you offended them. And if you hate them, why not just make your own space? 
until that happens and they will want to join again and the circle begins from the start. We are in the midst of what can be described as a war for the future of the gaming industry. They've started to ruin Hollywood movies before this, which is why that industry is collapsing currently, why there are barely any good movies coming out and why so many franchises are being ruined. And now they've come to do the same thing with the gaming industry. Only that this time their strategy has been uncovered sooner and thus there's more pushback from fans. Fans that they now try to silence and big influencers like Asmongold, Melanie Mac and others are becoming targets of them. I am happy to see such a huge opposition to them that isn't backing down and I can promise you that I will also keep going. Unlike Kotaku, I will cover the topics that really affect the gaming industry and I will keep exposing people and companies that try to harm the industry or the community and I would encourage you to push back as well, in any way possible. Unlike them, we don't need to harass or cancel people. For our side it should be enough to simply expose them and let them destroy themselves. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel and share this video with others. And other than that, thanks a lot for watching, I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you again in the next one. Until then, take care.